Okay, number 23, what's the value of the golden ratio? Um, I mean, I, I gave you a little formula here. You don't have to know this one. This is really the golden ratio. It's an irrational number. All you need to know for uh, this class is that this golden ratio is approximately 1.6. Uh, it's more precisely 1.618, blah, blah, blah. This goes on forever, but um, the golden ratio is just about 1.6. 1. Uh, and how is it related to the Fibonacci sequence? Okay, the answer um, is, as I um, we talked about before test number three, it is the limit of the, what is that? Okay. It's the limit of the two consecutive Fibonacci numbers. Uh, as uh, as n approaches infinity. So what this is saying is, you remember your Fibonacci numbers that starts with one and one, and then the following numbers are the sum of the sums of the two previous numbers: one, one, two, uh, three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty-one, and so on. And what this is saying is, if you divide a number, a Fibonacci number, by the previous number, so that would be the ratio of two consecutive Fibonacci numbers approaches the uh, golden ratio. So 21 over 13 is approximately 1.6. And then the next number will be 34. But if you divide 34 by 21, that number gets closer and closer to the uh, real golden ratio. Number 24, this is back to um, the chapter on finance. Uh, if you invest, or if your investment grows by 7.5% every year, Okay, that's annual compounding. How long does it take for your money to double? Now we have, a, we, I didn't teach you the explicit formula, okay? Because that would require a, a sophisticated use of logarithm. So you don't need to know this, but you can do trial and error, which is one strategy of problem solving, okay? So you, what you can do is um, write a 7.5% as a decimal, which is 0 0.075. And remember you add one to it, um, and this is the formula you learn for compound interest annually, or in exponential growth, you also learn the same thing in, in chapter six. Right? So it's 1.075 to the nth power. And because you want this money to double, to, you know, the double, you want set this equal to two. In other words, you're saying if you have one dollar, okay, and if it grows by a 7.5% every year, how long would it take for this one dollar to become two dollars? You can do 1,000 to become 2,000. It doesn't matter because you know you divide both sides by whatever number you are multiplying by. Uh, but anyway, so you get uh, you you get this, right? And uh, try to plug in different numbers. Try 10 for instance. Right? Well, okay, 10 would actually work. Uh, if you plug in nine, okay, uh, then you get 1.9, something that's very close to two. But if you do 10, then you get something over two. So the answer is 10 years. Okay, it's going to be somewhere between nine years and 10 years, but you can safely say it's going to take you about 10 years to double this, double this investment. Number 25, you have um, uh, three options. Okay, you are ready to borrow $26,000 for kitchen remodeling. Man, that sounds so familiar. Uh, and then you get uh, three quotes. Okay, option one is you, know, you have three contractors maybe. Uh, option one is uh, 36 months, you pay a monthly payment of $800 a month. Option two, 36 months, you pay $780 a month. Clearly, this is better than the first one. Or option three, 18 months. That's half of option one or two, but you have to pay extra, more every month, $1,230. Okay. Now, I'm not asking you to calculate the... Um, the, the, the rate, you know, the annual percentage rate here, uh, nor am I asking you to calculate the monthly payment based on a, a certain percentage. Okay, those, remember that, that there's a very complicated formula to calculate the amount of monthly payments. So that part I am not going to ask. But if you are given scenarios like this, I do want you to answer questions like A and B. A says, how much will you save overall if you choose option two instead of one? Well, that's an easy question. Option two, you save $20 a month for 306, uh, sorry, for 36 months. So you're not buying a house, you're just remodeling your kitchen. So this is a three year term. So $20 times 36 would actually do the, do the uh, trick here. Uh, that would be $720 of saving if you uh, choose option two over option one. How much would you save overall if you choose option three? 
rather than option two. So now you get to compare the total payments of this and the total payments of this. Option two is uh, an option in which you pay $780, 36 times. And that is the total payments of 28,080 cents. Option three, you pay a lot more every month, $1,230, but you only pay 18 times. And that product is 22,140. The difference between these is $5,940, and that is your answer. Okay. Now these are pretty simple questions. Okay. And I would uh, I would say you know everybody will encounter problems like this in his or her lifetime. So remember to be able to do things like this. Number 26, the table below shows how many people passed and failed a professional exam. Uh, use this table to answer each question. You have uh, two counties involved, LA County and Kern County to the north of LA County. And um, you have numbers of people who passed and who failed. What is the probability that anyone from either county passed the exam? Okay, so for this one, you better cl uh, pay close attention, right? So sometimes you have to look at a certain row or a certain column. In this case, because you are not asking which count county, you would be looking at the total row, that's the bottom row, right? And how many people passed? Uh, 470 out of what? 660, right? So you divide seven, uh, 470 by 660 and the answer is 71% or 71.21%. Okay, you see that? Uh, you, you look at the number of people who passed <laughs> divide that by the total number of people who took this test. And so that is your pass rate. Number B or part B, what is the probability that one passed the exam given that the uh, examinee was from LA County? So now you look at only the first row, LA County, 350 people pa passed out of 500. And so 350 divided by 500 is 70%. Okay, part C. Maybe a little more challenging. What is the probability that the person who passed the exam was from Kern County? Okay, in other words, find the conditional probability that a person is from Kern County given that the person passed. This time, we are only thinking of people who passed. Okay, and the question is, what percent of them are from Kern County, right? So the universe in this case is the people who passed. We use that term universe actually. Right. And the, perp the people who passed, that's the first column, okay? So you have 470 of them, okay? Those are the people who passed. And out of the 470, how many are, are from Kern County? So the answer is 120 divided by 470. This quotient is going to give you the answer. That's 25%, 25.5% of the people who passed are from Kern County. Now that of course is not you know discriminatory or anything, right? because clearly you have a lot more people who took the exam in LA County as opposed to uh, Kern County. So it's natural for this number to be much less than 50%. All right, number 27, um, use Hamilton's method to determine how many assistants are to be assigned to each department. You have sales department, development department, human resources department with these uh, numbers of employees. You have 420 employees altogether and 28 assistants are to be, you know, like administrative assistants or secretaries to be assigned to um, different departments. So the first thing you do, remember, remember uh, first thing you do is to, to figure out in, in terms of politics, how many um, citizens or people each representative, representative is to represent. And in this case, the question is how many uh, employees is uh, each assistant going to serve, right? And so the answer is going to be, this is called the common divisor or the uh, master divisor or the main divisor. Um, the divisor D is 420 divided by 28, which is 15. In other words, every assistant uh, should be serving or helping 15 employee employees. In other words, 15 for each group of 15 employees, about one assistant should be provided. That should make it simple because to get the quota, all you have to do is to divide the number of employees by 15. 220 divided by 15 is 40, sorry, 14.66. 80 divided by 15 is 5.33. 
and 120 divided by 15 is eight precisely. You add up these numbers, you will get the number of assistants because that's the way we decided what D should be. So this is 28. Now the minimum quota, remember in, in, in for Hamilton's method, you basically get the minimum quota, truncate uh, everything after the, um, the decimal number. So it's 14, five and eight. These add up to 27. So you need one more, um, well, you can have one more secretary or one more assistant to be assigned to one of these, sales, development, or human resources. Which one gets this lucky uh, last assistant? Well, the, uh, the decimal portion is six, six, three, three, and zero. So uh, according to Hamilton's method, that extra assistant should be given to, uh, to assigned to the department with the largest remainder, which is sales. So sales will get one more, you know, 15 as opposed to 14. And the other ones, this number is the same as this. This number is the same as that. Add up these numbers, you get 28. That is the total number of assistants and you have solved the problem. Number 28, for an annual conference, an association voted on, ho on the host city. Where do you want to go for this conference? Well, let's see, I want to go to Detroit. I'm not sure why. Uh, or Phoenix or Anaheim, the happiest place on earth. So where do you want to go? Well, um, so you have lots of people voting on this. 120 plus 60 plus 90 plus 70. And that is, do I have the total number here? Uh, let me see if I have the total number. Uh, oh yeah, so the question actually is, uh, who won by plurality? How about by instant voting, uh, instant runoff voting, IRV, or is there a Condorcet winner? Okay, so let's check, um, check on that. Okay, so it wasn't written here, but it's always uh, helpful to know how many people actually voted, right? So you have 120 plus 60 plus 90 plus 70, the total is 340. And the half of that is 170, right? So 170 is exactly half. Uh, you need at least, uh, you, need, uh, you need more than half to have a majority. So in this case, 171 votes would um, be the minimum number required for a majority. Now in plurality, uh, the highest, the, not the person or the choice with the highest number uh, of first place votes wins, right? So all you have to do is to count the first place, place votes by um, each of these cities. Detroit, Phoenix, Phoenix actually comes in two columns, right? So don't forget that. Detroit has 120. Phoenix actually has two, two columns, 60 plus 70, that's 130. And Anaheim is 90. So uh, by, uh, by plurality, Phoenix is the winner uh, by plurality. If you are to implement the um, instant runoff votes as your, um, as your method, then remember the least of these will be eliminated first. Anaheim uh, gets eliminated or removed because uh, this has the lowest or the fewest number of first place votes. And then it'll be just a one-on-one -on -one comparison between D and P, D, between Detroit and Phoenix. So what happens is because Anaheim is being removed, you basically just cross this out like this, okay? And then you say, all right, Detroit over Phoenix here, Phoenix over Detroit, Detroit over Phoenix, Phoenix over Detroit, right? And so once you remove A, this is the picture you get. Uh, Detroit is preferred over Phoenix in these two columns, 120 plus 90, that's 210, where Phoenix would be preferred over Detroit in these two columns and they, they only add up to 130. So in this case, Detroit becomes the winner by the um, instant runoff vote. Okay. So D, the Detroit wins. The first one, Phoenix wins. Second one, Detroit wins. If you do the uh, Condorcet method, so is there a Condorcet winner? Well, we already established that Detroit is over the Phoenix, right? So let's compare Detroit over the uh, Anaheim because if Detroit beats uh, Phoenix and Detroit is beat, uh, beats Anaheim, then of course Detroit will be the Condorcet winner, right? So uh, in this case, what you do is you just forget about P and all you do is look at D, Detroit and A, um, Anaheim, right? So if you remove Phoenix from all of, of this uh, entire chart here, this is what you get, okay? Just cross out all, of the, all the appearances of Phoenix and you get D over A in these two columns, that's 120 plus 70, that's 190. 
the uh, Anaheim is preferred over Detroit in the two middle columns, which add up to 150. So uh, 190 versus 150, Detroit wins. So Detroit is preferred over Anaheim, and Detroit was, as we seen, as we saw before, preferred over Phoenix. And therefore, Detroit in this case is the Condorcet winner, and it will be declared the winner uh, under the Condorcet method. All right, and then number 29 is, um, I will have a question like this, I think, on, on the final, uh, where I ask you to write a brief statement on what you learned in each of these topics. And I may ask you to pick three or five or 10 or one. Okay, I don't know how many I'm going to ask you to do, but I want you to be familiar with um, these topics. Um, be sure to write a correct and mathematically significant statement. Don't just say, I found uh, compound interest fun or you know, um, compound interest is hard. That's not a good statement. You would have to write something that is more intelligent and mathematically significant statement about these topics, okay? So um, what do you know about compound interest and mortgage? Um, you can say something like, um, you know, small interest rate ac difference actually makes a huge impact when you, are, um, when you are borrowing money for a long period of time or something like the compound interest, um, uh, compounds and uh, it will work that the power of the compound interest works for your advantage if you're borrowing uh, if you're saving money it'll go against you if you're borrowing money or something like that okay um, you can also say you can save a lot of money on mortgage on total payments by um, by choosing a shorter term or something like that even with the same interest rate um, and you can also say something like, you know, uh, that it's important to keep a good credit history because that will qualify you for lower interest rates, which uh, in long term will save you tons of money. Probability and expected values say something like in probability is always between zero and one, um, you know, one meaning certain and zero meaning impossible. The expected value is the amount of money that you expect to win every time you play a game and so on. Uh, conditional probability is um, probability assuming a certain condition, uh, false positive. You can say something about false positive like the examples we studied. You know, If you have a rare disease, uh, just the fact that you get a, a, a positive result does not mean that you have the disease. Uh, it's very likely that you got the false positive because there'll be so many people who actually don't have the disease, but um, you know, because every test is flawed, uh, it, there is no test that's 100% accurate. Even if it's 95% accurate, you have a lot more people who test positive uh, just because there are many people who don't have the disease and so on. Placebo effect, you should know what a placebo is. It's a fake pill basically, right? And the placebo effect is that sometimes um, because of a psychological, psychological effect of um, people taking placebo, thinking that they are taking the real thing, that sometimes they do get better, uh, even using the placebo, and that is called the placebo effect. Normal distribution, you can talk about the symmetric nature of the bell-shaped curve, and you can say this is the distribution uh, where if, if you have a, a standard normal distribution, you can figure out <coughs> by the z-score that uh, you can figure out the percentile according to the table. Uh, musical scale, you can say a lot about this. You know, you can talk about the, um, the frequency doubling every um, octave and uh, how that 5.9% is the separate, separate uh, the uh, common ratio between two notes that are half step apart. And harmony, um, two sounds or two notes sound harmonious or nice together if the ratio of their uh, frequency is a simple or close to a simple ratio. Uh, fractals, you can talk about something like this, right? Uh, it's basically uh, an iteration or repeated uh, pattern that you see in nature and art. A portion method by Hamilton and Jefferson, okay? Um, what do you know about Hamilton's method? It's a, num it's a method where you um, basically give that extra uh, representative to the state with the largest um, decimal portion, right? And, uh, and that favors smaller states where Jefferson's method actually messes with or alters, reduces the number D, the divisor, um, until you get, um, uh, until you, it's no longer necessary 
to figure out who gets uh, extra seats and so on. And this favors larger states, Hamilton favors smaller states. You can tell a lot more about, uh, for instance, the history of what happens with apportionment methods. Fairness in voting, uh, basically it's impossible, right? Uh, so you have, uh, people have established what is, should be considered the fairness criteria. And uh, then somebody proved that it is impossible uh, for anybody to, at any time to come up with a voting system that will guarantee that all fairness criteria are, will always be satisfied. Uh, what is gerrymandering? It's a redrawing, a manipulative redrawing of um, congressional district borders to favor one party or one um, subpopulation of, um, of the country or something, right? And uh, you can talk about that as well. All right, so be familiar with uh, these ideas, uh, these topics you studied, and uh, you'll have opportunities to write a, a paragraph or you know, maybe a sentence or two uh, about each of these topics. Okay, so that would conclude the uh, practice final. Um, Okay. So once again, uh, you know, I have gone through all the problems in, on the practice final, but it does not mean that you are automatically prepared. If you have understood these things, I think you have a good chance of doing well on the final. The final will have, you know, similar uh, format. You'll have true false questions and multiple choice questions, as well as free response questions. And for those free response questions, you have to show your work. Uh, by scanning your 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 sheets or your note your notebook paper whatever and uh, uploading that on the um, uh, in canvas under that um, the last assignment which is called show your work for the final all right so I hope you study hard and I hope you will do well again if you have any questions or concerns okay please do not hesitate to contact me all right I hope you have a great week take care see you later